say a quick tip too, based on so many experiences that I have had recently. And something that we will talk about is feeling unheard. So feeling unheard is this huge trigger for humans. We like to be heard, we like to be seen, and when we're not, it can be a big trigger for our dysregulation. So when we think about saying things to kids and we're feeling unheard, we've said the same thing a hundred times or whatever it is it feels like, then we may be prone to that trigger, that emotional response of feeling unheard, when in fact, it's really on us as the adult. And this is really hard to say with lots of stress that we have going on, but it is really on us to adapt and find ways to change our way of interacting with them so that they can process it more easily or they may be more likely to tune in. So, when we, for example, move in closer, get down at their level, put a hand on them, put a hand on their shoulder and just sit there for a minute or just be still. And it was interesting in session this week, I, I showed this to one of the kids that I was working with who uh, he'd been yelling at us or yelling at his, his mom to listen and wanted our attention. And we were in the middle of a conversation. So I, I use affect and gestures to help him tune in like, oh, we're talking right now, we're talking talking one minute. Uh, if, if they need that kind of healthy, warm boundary of we're in the middle of a conversation, I can't wait to hear what you say later. Uh, often I'll just use gestures and that is really effective because they can connect, they're visually connected, their body is connected. And again, we, we aren't stressing eye contact as something that they need to do, but it's something that we can promote and encourage from the inside to help them facilitate or facilitate that processing. So when we think about kids, I uh, kind of showed him in the moment and it was more direct. So modeling is the key. So when they see us adapt and adapt and shift our behavior to help others understand us, that's a really powerful modeling tool for them because then they learn that if they yell the same thing a lot of times, which can be really draining on everybody involved, then that might not be as effective as if they move closer or they use a tactile or a touch cue or they're using body orientation and their face orientation to their communication partner so that they can be sure that they're being heard. So this is a really quick idea that can be really powerful because the boy in session really moved in, moved in closer to his mom, put his hand on her and said, hey mom. and just sat there and she tuned in and it was really helpful. And again, it's not really our role to, or their role to figure out how to adapt and adapt. It's our role to model and to show them and to experientially allow them to understand or embody what this feels like, what the difference is from somebody yelling across the room or yelling from upstairs and what it feels like when somebody comes down, gets at your level, as a tactile cue, gives the moment of stillness or calm, and then we are at a stage where we are being and we can communicate truly versus really, really wanting to get a point across and wanting to be heard in that way. So there's such a difference and I would love to know how this comes across for you.